Hey guys, I'm RNG Gamer. I play all my games randomly. The Nintendo Switch is six years old. It's one of the best selling consoles of all time, has tons of great exclusives, it's relatively cheap, and there are just a lot of things to love about it. But it also has a few things that drive me absolutely crazy. Here are five things that I love and hate about the Nintendo Switch. Tons of special edition consoles and really cool controller options. This is a really simple one, but the Nintendo Switch has like a million different special edition consoles that come in various styles and colors. And the same thing goes for all the different controllers. You can get them in pretty much any color combination you want. And it's really a cool way to express your personality, especially if you're taking your Switch like on the go. <laughs> so if you wanna like show off that you're a big Animal Crossing fan, you can totally do that out in public. And you can slap some like neon orange Joy-Cons on there while you're at it and have it all collapse. I should look terrible if that's what you want to do. I think it's a really cool idea, and I just love that Nintendo sort of embraced this idea of like representing what you like in a game visually with your console. It's also really popular to collect a lot of the console variations, you know, if you have like unlimited money. <laughs> Flipping cart size limitations. I hate how there are so many games on the Switch that like just don't fit on the cart. How many times have you seen this? I don't want to buy a new game and have like a good portion of it be a downloadable patch. And I'm not talking about patches that like add extra content in the game. I'm talking about a game where like 80% of the game isn't on the cart. It's only on the cloud somewhere, <laughs> like in the vapors and you buy a cart and it's just like part of the game. And then the rest of it's just a download link to the rest of the content. If you're going to do this, just make the game downloadable only. Don't even have a physical copy of it or just do what they did back in the day and put all the content on multiple carts. We used to buy games all the time that have multiple discs that contained all the information. I don't think that most people would mind paying a few more dollars to make sure their games will still be playable when the servers go down. <laughs> this drives me absolutely crazy and I just refuse to buy any games on the Switch that are like this. A big focus on local multiplayer. If you have kids or siblings or roommates and you own a Nintendo Switch, I'm sure you're very aware of just how easy it is to just pick up like any Switch controller you've got lying around and just jump straight into a game with whoever's playing right then. My daughter and her friends are always playing games on the Switch together and it seems like every game is just kind of designed around doing that. Even games that are like single player focused often have like multiplayer options like Super Mario Odyssey. Yeah, one person plays as Mario, the other person could jump in and play as his hat. What a great idea. <laughs> It really makes the games engaging and a lot of fun and makes it so people don't feel like they're left out. When I was a kid, we would like rent a game that was one player and we would just take turns handing the controller back and forth every time we died. And like no one would ever get enough experience to get good enough to actually clear a section of the game. <laughs> So I love how easy it is to jump in and play with your friends on the couch with the Nintendo Switch. Stupid premium prices on Switch games. If you're a collector or you've just been playing Nintendo games for a long time, it's very obvious that Nintendo rarely, if ever, discounts their first party games. Want to pick up that Mario or Zelda game that's like six years old? <laughs> well, it's still the same price it was on launch day. And that's fine. Nintendo has always done that. We've gotten used to it. But what makes me really angry is multi-platform games that come out on the Switch and like the PS4 or the PS5 are usually more expensive on the Switch. <laughs> games that launch at like $30 on the PS4, well, they'll be $35 on the Switch. Old and common games that came out like a couple years ago that are $10 and $5 on every console, nope, not on the Nintendo Switch. Still 25 bucks, even used. GameStop is doing a sale right now where you can get four games under $20 for $40, so half off, or four games under $10 for $20, which is still half off. I went to five different GameStops around my town, basically all the GameStops around my town. At all the GameStops I went to, I only saw about like six Nintendo Switch games that were even included in the sale. <laughs> there were tons of PS4 and PS5 and Xbox One stuff, but no, not the Nintendo Switch. I don't know if they were all picked over or there just aren't any games that are that cheap. Whatever the case, you just don't see them. Less censorship. For most of my life, Nintendo was known to be the company 
that like censored and removed things from their games to make them more family friendly. They went through and like inspected the games for anything that might be offensive. And then if they found that in the game, the developers had to like remove it or change it to get their game published on a Nintendo console. Well, not anymore. <laughs> Here are the covers for the SNK 40th Anniversary Collection. Here it is on the PS4, and here it is on the Switch. Notice anything different between the two? Here's a shoot 'em up called Waifu Uncovered. It's an adult only game, 18 plus, from Europe, by the way. And its sequel, Waifu Discovered 2, also adult only. These games have full nudity in them. I can't believe it, and they're on the Nintendo Switch. They got a retail release. It didn't come out on the PS4, didn't come out on the Xbox One. The company wanted to put them out on those systems. Sony, Microsoft said no, but Nintendo was like, yeah, come on, bring it on, buddy. <laughs> now, I know the examples I just gave you dealt with nudity, and most of you out there aren't gonna care about that one way or another. I really kind of don't, other than just of the novelty of the whole situation. But just like I mentioned earlier with how Nintendo would interfere with the developers to get them to censor their games, there are rumors that Sony and Microsoft do that now. They make the developers go through their games and change things to appease the board members at Sony and Microsoft. And I think that's a slippery slope where the console manufacturers basically can become bullies, kind of like Nintendo was back in the day. Nintendo surprisingly isn't doing that anymore, and I commend them for that. I think if you're a developer, you can put what you want to into your game as long as it isn't hurting anybody else and let the public decide on if it's offensive or not. If they don't like it, they just don't have to buy the game. I just don't like the console manufacturers meddling with what the developers can do. But I love that Nintendo isn't doing it. The Switch version is often the worst version of the game. Now, I'm not talking about games like Resident Evil or The Witcher 3, where like, of course, The Witcher 3 isn't gonna run as well on the Switch as it does on the PS4 or the PS5. The Switch doesn't have as much computing power. What I'm talking about are ports of old games from like previous console generations. Things like arcade games and games from the 32-bit era that run perfectly on like a $35 Raspberry Pi with like no issues, run worse on the Switch. They almost always have like one to two more frames of input lag. And in case you don't know what input lag is, it's the amount of time between when you press a button and you see that action appear on the screen. This makes learning like old games, like arcade games, almost impossible to do on the Switch. This is the Psycho Shooting Collection on the Switch. Three games I ordered separately, paid a lot of money to import them. These are games from the 90s. They should be able to run on anything. They run so poorly on the Switch that the games are almost unplayable. Bullets fly down from the top of the screen and kill you before it's even displayed on the screen. Meaning you're playing with like about a quarter of a second delay the whole time. They re-released them on the PS4, fixed all the issues. Runs great. I see this happen over and over and over again where I buy a game that releases on the Switch and the games just don't play well and then later a better version comes out on another console. And I know they don't have to do this because there are games on the Switch of like arcade ports that play great. It's just the companies get like lazy about it. I don't know what it is about the Switch that makes companies think they can get away with putting out like an inferior version of the game, but they do it all the time and I absolutely hate it. I love that the Switch has a focus on games for the family. When I think of like the PlayStation, the games that come to mind are like Uncharted, The Last of Us, God of War. On the Xbox, it's like Halo, Gears of War, Call of Duty. <laughs> what do these games all have in common? They're all rated mature. They're for adults. When I think of Nintendo, I think of Mario, Zelda, Kirby, Animal Crossing. All family-friendly games. Nintendo makes all their most popular games as something everyone can enjoy. It's really hard as a parent when you find like a couple of free hours on a Saturday and you want to go downstairs and like play a game on your PS5 and the game's like rated mature and you have to sit there and worry about your kids walking in and seeing some violence that they shouldn't see. I never have to worry about that with the Nintendo Switch. Almost always when I'm playing a Switch game and my daughter walks in, she just picks up a controller and jumps in with me or sits there and watches me play. I really love that. The freaking spines on the cover art all look exactly the same. Look at all of the color and variants here. Every game has a unique spine, 
different color scheme and like its own personality. You can spot your favorite game from like across the room. You can find what you're looking for really easily and most importantly, you can add a bit of color to your game collection. Now look at this. Every game looks exactly the same. It's just red as far as the freaking eye can see. Nothing stands out. From a distance, you can't even tell what game is there. When I watch like game room tours on YouTube, I just skip past the parts where they show their Switch games because I can't even tell what they are. It's just red. All I see is red. I can't stand it. It makes like every game impossible to identify. Am I looking at like a really rare and interesting game or am I looking at just some like common piece of garbage? Unless the person filming the video like points it out, there's no way to know. Now I know this is a bit of a nitpick, but my Switch games are right above the TV where I do most of my gaming. And I hate when I'm like sitting on a loading screen and I'll look up and it's just like two giant red bricks sitting above my TV. It's like a big eyesore and I don't like it. I actually think because of this video, I'm gonna move my Switch games somewhere else where I don't have to look at them. That's a real problem. When your games look so bad that people like actively don't wanna look at them. I hate that, I hate that. And Nintendo did it on the Super Nintendo, the Wii and the Wii U as well. Go back to the GameCube days where everything stood out. It looked great. Drifting analog sticks. This is me just grabbing my Switch off the stand and jumping into Minecraft. Look at this. Look at this crap. Are you flipping kidding me? Look at this. Look at this. No hands on the controller. <laughs> no hands on the controller. Just, just going. There we go. Look at that. Fantastic, huh? Look. I know that like any analog stick has the potential to get analog stick drift. But in all my life, the only time I've ever seen it was on one PS2 controller and one PS4 controller. And I just sprayed some contact cleaner in there and it, it fixed it. I have had five Nintendo Switch controllers get analog stick drift. We've had like two sets of Joy-Cons get it, a pro controller, and two third-party aftermarket controllers. I've taken them apart, I've cleaned them, I've used contact cleaner on them, which has worked on every other analog stick issue I've ever had, and it does nothing on the Switch. I've never been able to fix one. I've never seen a console with controllers that are so fragile, regardless of the brand. I don't know what's going on. Why do Switch controllers break so easily? And why do they always start screwing up when you have like people coming over to play with you or your kid's friends come over? And why are they so flippin' expensive? Why are Joy-Cons so expensive? It blows my mind. And the Pro Controller, geez. But more importantly, why has it flippin' Nintendo done anything about it? In like 15 years, I feel like there are gonna be no working Switch controllers at all. And you just won't be able to play your Switch. That's so annoying. That's so annoying. It's made me just resort to like buying the cheapest, crappiest Nintendo Switch controllers I can because I know they're just gonna break anyway. I just don't get it and I absolutely, absolutely hate it. It's my biggest issue with the Nintendo Switch. I love how portable the Switch is. I'm sure this comes as a surprise to no one. I love how portable the Switch is. I love that you can just pop it out of the dock and take it with you, or you just pop it into the dock and play it on your TV. The screen, even on the original model that you saw earlier, still looks great. And the OLED screen looks even better. It has pretty good battery life, and it's not too bulky or heavy. It doesn't look weird when you're playing it out in public. It just looks kind of like a tablet. And sometimes you can even play multiplayer without any extra equipment. Someone can just grab the other Joy-Con and turn it around sideways and you're good to go. I love this about the Nintendo Switch, and I think that's really why the Nintendo Switch has done as well as it has, and it's still staying competitive even when the other companies are putting out consoles that are much more powerful. It does a good job of keeping an aging console relevant. Well guys, there are five things I love and hate about the Nintendo Switch. So is it awesome? Or does it like warrant some ire from the community? <laughs> of course it's awesome. Everybody knows the Nintendo Switch is awesome, but it's not perfect. The issues I mentioned are real issues for me that bother me. And honestly, I came up with the five things I hated a lot easier than I came up with the five things I really love about the Switch. Truthfully, the Switch just like has no competition for me. I mean, there's the Steam Deck, but I'm like a physical collector and there aren't physical games to play on the Steam Deck. So I'm stuck with the Switch, but being stuck with it, not too bad at all. 
Thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoyed the content, consider subscribing to the channel, hit that like button, leave a comment down below. I answer every one of them. And be sure to click that bell notification so you get notified when the new videos come out. They come out every Saturday. I want to give a special thank you to all our channel members. I really appreciate it, guys. Every dollar goes to help support this channel. If you'd like to get your name at the end of a video or access to the videos early or even member-exclusive videos, become a channel member. Click the Join button down below or find me on Patreon if that's easier for you. You can even sponsor a segment of a video or pick a game from my backlog for me to play. Once again, guys, thank you for all the support, and I'll catch you next time.